Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever and whenever you are watching this. Welcome to my next video, Richard here, and it's good to see you. And today we are going to be talking about how you can get some really cool panoramic photos while you're on your travels. No tripods, nothing special, just you, your camera, and a beautiful scene. So let's take a look. Okay, so like I said, really simple tutorial today on how to get some real good handheld panoramic um, photos of when you're out and about. So, so I'm gonna show you some photos in a second that um, some are really old, going back to 2011, 2012, 2013, when I had um, less knowledge to what I've got now. I didn't know the right way to do things, um, but I just wanted to show you them so that you could see that it's, with a little bit more time than I spent, you will be able to get some really good photos. So let's have a look at them now. So the first one here is Cape Rainer. Um, considering I had just got my first camera, it was an old Sony um, A350 or something. Um, you know, it's not perfect. The, uh, there's various things that I'm not gonna point out, but um, you can see that it's not too bad considering I think this was three images. Uh, the next one that we have oh, is Death Valley, um, overlooking Badwater Basin, I think, from up high. Obviously, the sky is not great in this one, but again, handheld. I think this is more in the editing than um, than the picture itself, but I had a hard drive failure some years ago, which killed all my originals, so this is what I'm left with. Don't forget to back up your photos, people. We've then got Bad Water. This is another one from um, America, from Death Valley. This is down in Bad Water Basin, and I've actually got a better photo than this printed, or properly edited one printed and hanging on the wall in my lounge. So this is one of my favorites I think I've ever done, certainly back in 2013 it was, anyway. And this next one is probably the one that I'm most pleased with it is a shot of Yosemite um, four or five images I think I'm going to show you this one a bit later on um, how I got to this final um, this final picture and it's one of my favorite ones I knew I had a little bit more knowledge what I was doing it was still handheld it was still shooting in landscape instead of portrait for the um, for the panoramas to stitch together but I am really pleased with it and I wouldn't be surprised if this one gets printed at some point as well. There are a couple of things you can do before you actually press that shutter button while you're out in the field to make your life when you get back into the um, into the office a little bit easier and I'm going to go through a couple of things now in Lightroom um, to show you what that is. The first one is um, how do you find those images once you've taken them? You may have a long line of 10 photos mixed up with another 100 photos that you've taken. So this is just a little tip to find out to help you spot those ones that you want to stitch together. The second one is the exposure um, and uh, how you fix everything. And uh, the second one I find quite useful to keep it a little bit more consistent is the, um, the focusing mode or flick into manual focus after you've done the first image. So let's just jump into Lightroom now and I will show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so here is a shoot that I did recently, just a family walk, we went out into the forest and there are a batch of images in here that I wanna string together, but it's a little bit confusing over which ones I actually wanna use. So what I do, and I'm gonna bring a couple of photos back that I've sneakily hidden, is I take a photo of my hand. <laughs> so before I start the, the chain of images that I want, I stick my hand out, take a quick photo of it, um, shoot the ones I want, and then at the end of the chain of images, I shoot my hand again. That means that when I get back and I've got all these photos um, imported, I can see the ones between, it doesn't have to be your hand, obviously with the sky or the floor or your back of your friend's head or whatever. As long as you know what it is. I use my hand because I would never take a photo of my hand. Okay, so we can see here now that we have a 
couple of pictures of my hand. That's the first and the second hand shot. And in between, we have a long line of images that we are going to stitch together. It just means I can tell from uh, instantly that in between the two hands and the images that, that I want to use for the panorama. And it saves me trying to work it out when I get back into the office. Okay, so um, I've just switched to another microphone. If I sound a little bit different, that is why, but let's get crack on with this. So we now know the images that I want to use in my panorama. So we have the hand, first hand, a chain of images here, and the second hand. Now, when I was out in the field, what I also did was I metered and got the right exposure for the first image. And you can see over here that all of the other images are taken at exactly the same exposure 400th of a second f8 and iso 100. one thing that i also did was i usually focus where i want to on the first image and then i flip the camera or lens to manual focus so that the same focal range is in place for all of the images just in case something jumps in or um, you know you pick up a hill that's closer all these trees and it just may affect the depth of field in all the images. So that's the three things that I do um, out in the field before I do, you know, as I'm doing this. So the next thing is now down to the computer. Really, really simple. Highlight all the images that you've chosen to merge. You can right mouse click photo merge, or you can click on photo, photo merge, and then panorama. And that will analyze all of the photos um, Actually, let me cancel that because I just want to show you one other thing. When you are taking your photos, the key thing to do here is just to make sure that in each photo you overlap. So there must be something in the photos that the computer can pick up in two of the different photos. So for example, in the first photo here, we've got this area of grass here on the right hand side of the image. And on here, it's there. So that is what that's what it will use to match up. We have this cycle and this um, pile on here, cycle and pile on here. We have this path, circular path in the background, which is here as well, and so on. Um, and let's go to the last image. We've got this this tree um, bank coming in on the right hand side here, and this tree thing here. So it needs that in the image to be able to know what to stitch together. So we've highlighted them all. Let's just go back to the normal view and make these a little bit smaller because it's way too big for my liking. Right mouse click or like I say up here, photo, photo merge and click panorama. That will then analyze everything and give you the images stitched together. Now there's a couple of things here that you can look at. Sometimes these three options here don't make a great deal of difference. The spherical and the cylindrical, slight changes, not a great deal most of the time I've found, however that may be different for, for you. Perspective does make a difference, not so much on this photo, um, although that doesn't look as good, but I'm going to show you another one in a minute where it makes a horrendous difference. Um, so I normally go with one of these two. I think for this one, I'm going to go with uh, cylindrical because it just gives me that little bit more height, I think, which I like. Um, a couple of options down here. You can have auto crop, which will crop out all the white areas around the image, or you can choose fill edges and the computer will do, or Lightroom will do the best it can to fill in the whites with what is around um, the edges and again sometimes it works well sometimes it doesn't let's try it here fill out edges see what it does down the bottom here and that hasn't done too bad a job um, and that's it pretty much done you click on merge it will take a few seconds depending on how many photos you've got And there we go, that is done and it's given you a pretty nice panorama. Um, and you can then go ahead and adjust any edits that you want to do, make any changes that you think you, you might need to make. Um, and it's giving you a pretty decent handheld panorama. 
I'm going to show you another one that I did, which um, I've saved to uh, to prove a point more than anything. Um, let's go back to library. Let's go to find all the images. So again, this is something I did in Yosemite. You saw the photo that came out of this earlier. These are the three images that I used. But let me just show you um, same process. Highlight them all. Photo merge. Panorama. And okay so there are now there's now going to be some of these options that don't work as well which is why i want to show you exactly what does happen so spherical and cylindrical again a little bit difference not too much but if you see when i do perspective it kind of wants to push everything back and make it bring this closer to me send that further away which clearly doesn't work in this instance the other thing that doesn't work as well is the fill edges if I click on fill edges here, this side down here will do a pretty decent job. But if you look over here at the bridge, <clears throat> you will see that it will do, it will make a right old hash of it. Uh, yeah, the bridge doesn't do that. Um, so down here doesn't look too bad and the tree's not too bad. You might be able to get away with that, but this side, definitely not. So on this instance, we're not gonna fill the edges. We are gonna do auto crop if you want to. Um, and again, merge and that will give you the merged file and this is using landscape photos now again which I wouldn't recommend I would definitely recommend using portrait um, because I just think you get a better you don't lose as, as much foreground or distance or sky than um, in the landscape using landscape photos so so looking at this one again I'm going to click into develop and I've got a um, sneaky preset down here that I've used before that I know uh, works on this. And that gives me a pretty decent um, panorama again. Maybe just needs a little bit of brightening. It looks a little bit uh, OTT. So there, again, pretty good. Um, Pretty good result, handheld, as I was walking along, nothing um, too complicated. The last thing I would say that I forgot to mention at the beginning was try not to move anything. If you stand, I, I just stand in the same place and all I do is twist my waist and, 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 and um, shoot left to right that way. I don't move my feet or anything like that. And it's all done, camera to face, click, twist, click, twist, click, twist. Obviously taking a picture of my hand at the start and at the end of each series of photos and there we go that is it thank you for watching i hope that was useful handheld panoramas a little bit of editing stick them together in lightroom and um yeah you know not going to use it no tripod no special heads it's just a real simple way of getting some nice shots that are great for personal use great for hanging on your wall because um, we don't do enough of that and uh, just enjoying your photography. So I hope that helps when you're on your travels next. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if it did. Please don't forget to like the, um, like the video, like I said, and also subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment down below if you've got an easier way to do it or if you've got any questions. And I guess that's it until, <clears throat> excuse me. I guess that's it until the next video. So thank you for watching. Have a great day. See you next time.